She is a columnist for over 900 newspapers across the country. You see her twice a week as a special correspondent on Good Morning America, and her wit, charm, and humor make us laugh at the nitty-gritty aspects of our life. She's none other than Irma Bombeck, and she's with us this morning. Irma, how about a Boston welcome? <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. Again. Thank you. You have, you've, you've come to us because you've written this book that kept me in stitches all weekend, Motherhood, the Second Oldest Profession. Now, I would love to know, what's the first? We call it agriculture. <laughs> it's, uh... <laughs> I, get, I do get a lot of people who wonder what the first is, and I think you're not old enough to read this book. I mean, what are we talking about? <laughs> Why does motherhood rate second? Well, because they had dibs on it first. Um, <laughs> I, really, I, I, I went through this, and I thought, you know, we, we ought to be somewhere in the top ten. I mean, we have to be. You bet. You know, some, somewhere near the top. But I knew I couldn't take the first one because it had already been spoken for. All right, that's right. And uh, those people get off their feet a whole lot more than we do. So <laughs> I'm <laughs> given a choice. Oh, yes. I, I had, I, where does it all come from? Because it is so funny, and you make us think about things that we say to our oh, kids. it's my life. What are you saying? Where is it? I mean, th th this is it. I'm on every page in this book. I mean, I'm the whole chapter on guilt. I'm just, I mean, I am there. I, I am I am probably a part of every mother in this book you, you will read about. Did I mean, you really make one of your children go out and wax the driveway? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. The, the, the type of a wonderful mother who put her child out to play when the chill factor was about 30 below, <laughs> locked the door behind them. Oh, I was a wonderful mother. Just what, what are the most common complaints? Because I know people write to you, and you get input from a, a lot of people. What are the most common complaints about being a mother? About being a mother? Um, never getting any time to yourself. Uh, never being alone, and I, I think this is really important. Uh, it's a steady job, too. Yeah, sure <laughs> I mean, is. It's, it's really steady. We have absolutely no chance of ever being fired from it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, if, if you don't show up or if you goof off or when, uh, we get no sick leave, none whatsoever. I mean, you know, if, 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 you, were, if you were to come out and your, your lips were parched and your eyes would feel like round razor blades, and you're so tired and nauseated and you can't stand on your feet and your, your head is just burning up with temperature and you say, you know, I think I'm going to that big utility room in the sky. I mean, someone would look at you and say, what, does that mean I gotta buy my own lunch? What? I mean, and and, and this, this is it, it's a constancy. It's the constancy of always being a mother and making all the decisions. I hated the decisions. Well, Everything I, was major. But I'd love to know your impression now that, that a lot of fathers are staying home and mothers yes. are going to work. Can fathers be good mothers? I don't know. I, I saw this thing. Well, Chris, I've devoted a whole chapter to Frank in here. Frank, who uh, traded roles with his wife to stay home and become the first mother in the suburbs of Rochester who had a mustache who was not on estrogen. <laughs> so Frank, Frank stayed at home <clears throat> with the kids, and it was, it was really interesting. I think, I think men at first, when they're given this job, think this isn't so bad. You know, what are, what are they talking about? I can make things come out even, hey, go in that bathroom and pick up that towel and you know, put you to bed and you look nice and take the baths and all this stuff. They can do it, do it for 20 years and then check in with me. Right. I mean, that's the point, you see. It goes on and on and on. It's not a game. It's not a game at all. It, it's the toughest job you will ever have in your life. How about the impact of the women's movement on being a mother? It's had great impact. Uh, I think uh, 10 years ago, I could never have done a column on latchkey children without getting a burst of outrage from people who had said, what kind of a mother would, which is the theme of the whole thing, what kind of a mother would possibly give her child a door key, you know, when he can barely reach the doorknob, you know. I mean, this is terrible, this is horrendous. I don't, I don't think we have that much outrage anymore. I think children are blending into our lives a little, a little bit better. Um, there's less and less guilt about going out to work. It's still there, but there's and, less and, and less a, of much it. And much more necessity. Yeah, absolutely. You work. don't have any choice. Yeah. How about someone like Helen Gurley Brown? who tells us we can have it all. I mean, how, what kind of an impact does that have on motherhood? Well, I, I used to think, you know, that, that I believed every word she says. Now, now I'm totally convinced the woman writes fiction. <laughs> Best fiction writer of our times. I mean, I, you know, don't, don't give me this garbage, you know, that, that tells me I can be all things to all people. I can be a chauffeur, a mistress, a little nurse, and I can be all, I cannot be all those things, and I killed myself trying. I can't about, do that. How about your thoughts on cleaning? My thoughts on cleaning, mm -hmm. I rarely think about it. <laughs> <laughs> How about facing a crisis? 
Facing a crisis is, is really interesting because really some of the best fiction being written in this country today is being written or um, shared with you by um, um, pediatricians. Pediatricians who will give you such wonderful lines as, um, make sure he keeps it down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love that one? <laughs> make, make sure he keeps it down. And the one I love, it, the one I always love, is he, they would say, watch his stool. <laughs> and I would think, why, why would I want to do that? <laughs> why? I mean, you know, I mean, you know to, to, to trace a little nickel that had traveled throughout his body or something like that, you know. I mean, I'm independently wealthy. I don't have to worry about the money. <laughs> Not that bad. And also, we're going to take a break and come back, but I have to leave you with one thing. Mother Ease is a, a whole a chapter on things we say to our kids we never think about. How about this one? If you fall off that swing and break a leg, don't come running to me. <laughs> In here, you say that your husband would come home and say, so what have you been doing all day? I know, I know. Here, here, here's a woman. I have borne him three children. Um, I have been writing for 20 years. I have seven books, 10 honorary doctorates. He would come home to me and say, so um, what's been happening? You know, <laughs> I think, don't you even notice? <laughs> Did you ever no say, you do. wait a minute, let me tell you what I've been doing all day? Oh, we all, we all tell them. We all tell them. I, I'm not sure they listen. That's the problem. <laughs> listen, could, could, we, could we talk and make a match here? <laughs> I mean, I, I, what, what do you have at home? You have girl or boy? I have three at home and one who comes home to do his laundry once a week and get a home cooked right, meal. Right, right. Boys or girls? Uh, two boys and a girl home and a boy who comes the girl? home once a week. The yes. girl? Yes. Uh, she have a nice personality. <laughs> Fab? They're all fabulous. <laughs> yes. Great. Uh, we, we have a revolving door yeah. on, on, on the empty nest, and, and I thought, oh, it's going to be so terrific, you know, when they're all gone. And they come home, and what they do, they not only come home, but they complain about how your life has changed. They said, you know, I mean, what's this yogurt stuff? You know, I want food, you know. And, and my, my son said, you know, you, you, you don't eat anything anymore that doesn't have a grain of wheat growing out of the top and say, natural, you know, I don't want to eat natural. I mean, they come home as critics. They come home, they want the house to be the same way as when they left. And I'm sitting around, you know, I mean, I'm at the stage of my life, you know, I mean, I get tired 8.30 at night, you know. And I'm sitting there, I'm watching animal documentaries on PBS. You know, he doesn't want to do this. I mean, he's, I think, you're driving me crazy. I, didn't I raise him once? <laughs> do I have to do it again? So there's no hope. There's no there's real no answer, hope. right? But I saw a, an insulting offer a while back that said we were worth something like $5.42 an hour. You're going to believe that? Welders get more than that. Oh, people who clean restrooms get more than that. And that's not right. I think, I think this, that if they paid women what they were really worth, I don't think there's a man in this world who could afford to be married. Really? He couldn't afford us. What do you Absolutely think would really not. be worth an hour? Well, something comparable to uh, a brain surgeon. Uh, <laughs> here, here. An air controller. I mean, we have as much pressure, you know. I, I, I would think um, $15, $16 an hour if we didn't have to sleep over. <laughs> oh, well, you know, that's the perfect timing because I, oh, I, we really, my daughter and I laughed so much this weekend. I was reading this out loud to her, but Irma, please read this letter. Irma wrote this to her own babysitter oh, once. And to Miss Tibbles? Oh, oh dear. It will okay. really strike a nerve with all of okay. us. Okay, this is a note to the babysitter when I'm leaving. Dear Miss Tibbles, the suppositories are in the refrigerator next to the mealworms. The mealworms are for the lizard who eats breakfast when everyone else eats breakfast. The suppositories are for Bruce's nausea. Now, he will work against you, but persevere. Please return them to the fridge as they are better chilled. The antibiotic is to be given every 12 hours. Bruce is crabby at the 3 a.m. medication, and he will spit in your face, but remind him it is for his own good. Be firm. Now, the baby aspirin are in the medicine chest on the top shelf. Start early, as the cap is childproof and impossible to remove. <laughs> you simply depress the cap and twist at the same time in a counterclockwise movement until the arrow reaches the indentation, and then, using your thumbnail, flip up. If you cannot get it off, give it to Bruce. <laughs> he can whip off that little sucker in two seconds flat. <laughs> He has not been able to tolerate solids yet, but try him on some gelatin and crackers. If he throws up, stop feeding him solids. <laughs> That's it. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> and it brings up the whole issue of, of single parents and needing babysitters. How does motherhood affect, how does single parenting and motherhood go together, or do they? Oh, they have to go together, and, and it's, it's, it's really difficult. There's, there's a lot of, of things in there from the woman who does not want a baby, uh, which, which I worked uh, a long, long time on, because in my position, uh, it is difficult for me to appreciate, um, I mean, let's, let's face it, I, I wouldn't have had any other life without children. I mean, I can't imagine a life without kids. I mean, they've driven me crazy, you understand? <laughs> but I, I, have, I have enjoyed the experience, I truly have. And I thought, now I, I've got to be fair to this, this woman, and, and how can I possibly do this? And I lived with her uh, for about three weeks, and finally I, I think I came in. What, what we are, and, and what is so difficult about parenting, is that we make a commitment to something. And we are an extension of this child's fever. Mm -hmm. We are an extension of their anger. We're an extension of their frustration. And unless you're willing to take that on, it could be a, a real major decision. How seriously do you want women or people that read and learn from you to perceive you? I'm not going to beat them over the head with it. I, I think my, my audience is bright enough. Oh, they are bright, bright people. I don't have to spell anything out for them. I can do a lot with humor, but I think most of them can, can ferret underneath and make surface the things that I'm trying to say. There's so much truth in, in what we share together. There's so much truth there. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by pointing it out to you. You know it's there. And I, th I think you can appreciate that. So to be taken seriously is not a worry of mine. <laughs> oh, but really, I, th I really did love this book. I thank you. Motherhood, the second oldest profession, and it's great to oh, see you nice again. nice to see Irma you again. Bombay. Thank you. I had so much fun before the show with Irma in the green room. I kind of forgot what I was doing. You're such a great lady.